Good morning, class. So today we're going to be going over chapter 18, gastrointestinal and urologic, urologic emergencies. Abdominal pain is a common complaint. The cause of abdominal pain is often difficult to determine. As an EMT, you do not need to determine the exact cause. You should be able to recognize a life-threatening problem and act if needed. Anatomy and physiology. The abdominal cavity contains the gastrointestinal system, genital system, and urinary system. Made up of solid and hollow organs, injury to a solid organ could cause shock and bleeding. Breach of a hollow organ causes its contents to leak out and contaminate the abdominal cavity. So here's a picture of your solid organs, so your liver, your kidney, ovaries, spleen, and pancreas, and your hollow organs. Uh, this can be your gallbladder, your ureters, uh, large intestines, fallopian tubes, urinary bladder, small intestines, and your stomach. The gastrointestinal system responsible for digestion, digestion process. Digestion begins when food is chewed. Saliva breaks down food. The stomach is the main digestive organ. Deliver assists in digestion. Secretes bile. Filters toxic substances. Creates glucose stores. The gall, gallbladder is a reservoir for bile. Small intestine. Duodenum. Jejunum. Ileum. Colon is going to be your large intestine. Food that is not broken down comes here. Water is absorbed. Stool is formed. Uh, spleen, located in the abdomen, but has no digestive function. The genital system. The ab abdominal space also holds reproductive organs. The urinary system controls discharge of waste materials filtered from blood by kidneys. Two kidneys, one on each side of the body. Your readers join each kidney to the bladder. The bladder is located behind the pubic symphys. The bladder empties urine outside the body through the urethra. The male urinary si system. So your kidneys, your ureters, uh, bring urine down to your bladder, <clears throat> your prostate gland, and then your urethra. So pathophysiology, the abdominal cavity and organs are lined by a peritoneum, parietal peritoneum, lines the walls of the abdominal cavity, a visceral peritoneum covers organs. Foreign materials such as blood, pus, or bile can irritate the per peritoneum. Acute abdomen refers to sudden onset of abdominal pain, often associated with severe progressive problems. Peritonitis, inflammation of the peritoneum, can cause ileus. So uh, other problems that you may have in your abdominal cavity are diverticulitis, cholecystitis, and acute appendicitis. So two types of nerves supply the peritoneum. Parietal peritoneum supplied by the same nerves that supply the skin of the abdomen. Visceral peritoneum supplied by autonomic nervous system produces referred pain. So basically referred pain means uh, pain in your shoulder is going to be, even though there's something going on with your stomach, that's going to be referred pain. So here you have your synapsis and your gallbladder is down here. And this is, this is going to be your referred pain right up here, even though the issue is down here. Causes of acute abdomen, ulcers, protective layer of mucus lining erodes, allowing acid to eat into an organ. Gallstones may form and block the gallbladder's outlet, leading to cholecystitis. Pancreatitis, inflammation of the pancreas, appendicitis, inflammation of, or infection in the appendix. Usually, people with appendicitis are going to be lower right quadrant pain. Gastrointestinal hemorrhage, symptom of another disease, may be acute or chronic. So you could have an upper GI bleed where a patient's coughing them up. Coughing up blood, uh, what we usually look for is what we call coffee grounds emesis. So it looks like basically coffee grounds and the patient's uh, vomit. That's going to be an upper GI bleed. A lower GI bleed is going to be if there's blood in the patient's stool. So always want to ask when patients complain of abdominal pain, if nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and then what color it looks like because that will give you a good indication. And if it smells really bad, uh, it's probably going to be a GI bleed. GI bleeds are probably one of the worst smelling things you'll ever smell in your life. 
esophagitis, uh, lining of the esophagus becomes inflamed by infection or acids from the stomach. Gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD. Uh, it's going to be kind of upper chest pain area. Um, a lot of older adults have this. Anytime they eat anything spicy, uh, they're going to have uh, some GERD issues. So esophageal varices, pressure within blood vessels surrounding esophagus increases. So alcoholics usually get these esophageal varices where they are coughing up blood, uh, but it's not going to look like uh, coffee grounds emesis. So ask the patient if they're a drinker. What uh, what does their blood look like when they're coughing it up? They, they might have esophageal varices. Mallory Weiss syndrome. Junction between the esophagus and the stomach tears, causing severe bleeding. Gastroenteritis. Infection from bacterial or viral organisms or caused by non-infectious conditions. Diverticulitis. Fecal matter becomes caught in the colon walls, causing inflammation and infection. Hemorrhoids. Created by swelling and inflammation of blood vessels surrounding the rectum. Urinary system. Cystitis. Bladder infection is common also called urinary tract infection or UTI. So for a urinary tract infection, um, ask them if a few common symptoms for patients who have UTIs or are difficulty urinating, urinating a lot, and cloudy or dark urine. Um, so ask the patient, does it look clear or does it look kind of cloudy? Um, Women are more prone to getting UTIs than men uh, due to their urethra is a little, little shorter. Kidneys play a major role in maintaining homeostasis. When the kidneys fail, uremia results. Kidney stones can grow over time and cause blockage. Acute kidney fail failure, sudden decrease in kidney function, reversible with prompt diagnosis and treatment. Chronic kidney failure. Progressive and ir irreversible damage, eventually dialysis is required. So anytime somebody's on dialysis, they're gonna have a fistula in their arm. They're gonna have to go to dialysis at least three times a week. Uh, each dialysis appointment takes about three hours, three to four hours. So make sure you take care of yourself, take care of your body, because dialysis is a pretty bad thing. And the only way to fix that by not going to dialysis, let's get a kidney transplant, and those are hard to come by. Female re reproductive organs, gynecological problems are a common cause of acute abdominal pain. Lower quadrant pain may relate to the ovaries, fallopian tubes, or uh, uterus. Other organ systems, the aorta lies immediately behind the peritoneum. Weak areas can result in abdominal aortic aneurysm, or triple A, can be difficult to detect. Use extreme caution, caution when assessing or detecting AAA. Uh, usually they'll have uh, a bump, um, like a small, not as big as a tennis ball, but maybe about a golf ball, either in their stomach or lower back. And that could be a symptom of AAA if you guys see it. So pneumonia can cause ileus and abdominal pain. Hernia, protrusion of an organ through an opening to a body cavity where it does not belong. May not always produce a noticeable mass or lump. Strangulation is a serious medical emergency. So a lot of the times for people with hernias, they do have a mass. They might not always have one, uh, but you could definitely see it and they could show you it. Um, it's usually in the groin or lower quadrant area. It's going to be where your hernia is. And um, strangulation is possible uh, because they basically get their almost their tubes uh, caught in a knot and it cuts off circulation serious hernia signs and symptoms a formerly re reducible mass that is no longer reducible pain at the hernia site tenderness when the hernia is palpated red or blue discoloration so any cyanosis um, it's going to result in not getting enough oxygen to your organs. Scene size up, scene safety, consider gown and disposable protective covers for shoes, mechanism injury, nature of illness, may be the result of violence, use assessment results to develop an early index of suspicion for life threats, 
primary assessment, airway and breathing. Abdominal pain may cause shallow, inadequate respirations, circulation. Ask about blood and vomit or back or black tarry stools. Check pulses in both arms. So, like I said, remember, ask about blood and your vomit or, or your stools. Ask them what color it looks like. And then check pulses in both arms. Uh, triple A or can cause uh, fluctuations in blood pressures in both arms. And then transport decision. Immediate transport is warranted if there are signs of significant illness. History taken. Sample history, nausea and vomiting, change in bowel habits and urination, weight loss, belching or flatulence, pain, other signs and symptoms, concurrent chest pain. Secondary assessment, physical, physical examination, pain, tenderness, signs of acute abdomen, expose and assess abdomen, palpate gently. So remember, every time you're, you're assessing somebody with abdominal pain, you want to palpate all four quadrants. You're going to palpate from the, the furthest away part of the quadrant that hurts. So say if this patient has left upper quadrant pain, you're going to palpate your right lower quadrant and then maybe go to your left quadrant and then back over to your right quadrant or vice versa and then palpate over here so if we press down and patient has pain when you're pressing down that's called tenderness so if patients complaining of abdominal pain already and you push down and they complain of even more pain that's pain and tenderness to the site so vital signs check the respiratory rate and pulse rate Reassessment. Frequent reassessment is important. Assess the effects of interventions, including treatment for shock and emotional support. Transport the patient in the most comfortable position possible. Let the patient tell you how they want to be transported. Do they want to be transported laying down? Do they want to be transported laying up? Do they want to be transported on their side? Um, be careful about laying them on their side, though. Uh, you want to make sure that they have an airway all the way to the hospital. And depending on what type of ambulance you guys are in, if they lay on their right side, you're not going to be able to assess them. Emergency medical care. You cannot treat causes of acute abdomen. Take steps to provide com comfort and lessen the effects of shock. Treat the patient for shock even when obvious signs are not apparent. Low flow oxygen may decrease nausea and anxiety. After completing patient care, clean the ambulance equipment and hands. Dialysis emergencies. Dialysis is the only definitive treatment for chronic kidney failure. Dialysis filters blood, cleans it of toxins, and returns it to the body. If the patient misses dialysis treatment, pulmonary edema can occur. Some services transport patients to and from dialysis centers. So if you guys go and work an IFT for, for the first part of your career in a facility transport ambulance, you're going to be taking patients to dialysis centers to and from. So dialysis process it. Uh, it takes about three to four hours. Uh, they stick a couple tubes in your arm, in your fistula, and they filter the blood for you because you guys have no more kidneys. And it acts as a kidney kidney machine for you guys. And so always ask if the patient, if there's any issue, uh, if you guys run calls on these patients, ask them when's the last time they went to dialysis. Ask them if they actually completed their dialysis appointment. Sometimes they stop their dialysis appointments for whatever whatever reason. Um, ask them how much fluid they took off and if they got all that fluid back. Because they'll weigh patients before and after to make sure that they're, they don't take too much fluid and they don't give them back too much fluid. So a dialysis machine functions like normal kidneys. Adverse effects of dialysis, hypotension, muscle cramps, nausea and vomiting, hemorrhage or infection at the access site. Management, okay. So your fistula, basically what they have um, in your arm is a doctor performs a surgery. They take a artery and a vein and they almost tie them together. And when you go through dialysis, they hook up both a tube to both your artery and vein to filter the blood through there. And if the the dialysis workers aren't careful, you could have a lot of uh, a lot of blood coming out if they don't stop the bleeding right away. So always be careful for these patients. And don't ever take a blood pressure 
on a site of the dial, excuse me, the fistula. So patient has a fistula on the left arm, you're taking a blood pressure on the right. Don't ever take a person's blood pressure on the side of the fistula. It'll pop the fistula and it'll break it. So review. The blank lies in the retroperitoneal retro space. So remember this question. This question I guarantee you'll probably see either on your uh, quiz or your national registry. So B, the pancreas, kidneys, and ovaries lie in the retroperitoneal space, which is behind the peritoneum and are often the cause of acute abdominal pain. The liver, a stomach, and small intestine are all found within the true anterior abdomen. So remember, pancreas, kidneys, and ovaries lie in the retroperitoneal space behind the peritoneum. Okay, the blank. Excuse me. Which of the following is a hollow organ? <laughs> Remember you have two types of organs. You have solid and you have hollow. So D, the gallbladder is a hollow organ that concentrates and stores bile, which is produced by the liver. Other hollow organs include the stomach and intestines. The liver, spleen, and kidney are all solid organs. So a 34-year-old woman with a recent history of pelvic inflammatory disease, or PID, PID uh, presents with acute, severe abdominal pain. Her abdomen is distended and diffusely tender to palpation. Based on these findings, you should suspect... So A, peritonitis, an inflammation of the thin membrane that lines the abdominal cavity, typically represents, excuse me, presents with acute abdominal pain. Causes of peritonitis include infection and blunt or penetrating abdominal trauma. The pain caused by peritonitis is typically diffuse, widespread, whereas appendicitis, pancreatitis, and cholecystitis, inflammation of the gallbladder, typically present with pain that is localized to a particular area. So most patients with acute abdominal pain present with So these could all be possible, but what do they mostly present with? So D, tachycardia, heart rate over 100 is commonly seen in patients with acute abdomen. It is usually a result of severe pain. Hypotension is not seen in all patients with an acute abdomen. If the patient is hypotensive, you should suspect internal bleeding or severe infection or sepsis. Many patients with an acute abdomen ha may have increased respiration, tach tachnipia. However, dyspnea is a feeling of shortness of breath is not common. So which of the following signs or symptoms would you be the least likely to find a patient with an acute abdomen. So B, signs and symptoms of an acute abdomen include, but are not limited to, rapid and shallow breathing, a tense and distended abdomen, tachycardia, restlessness, and constipation or diarrhea. So remember, distended is means extended further out so patients who have liver or kidney disease usually have distended abdomens bigger than normal because they're retaining fluid so their abdomen is going to be distended a condition in which a person experiences loss of appetite is called So D, anorexia is defined as a loss of appetite. It is a nonspecific symptom, but is often associated with gastrointestinal disease and abdominal pain. Ileus is a paralysis of the muscular co contractions that normally propel matter through the intestines. Colic is a severe intermittent cramping pain. Emesis is a proper medical term for vomiting. 
Okay. So the medical term for inflammation of the urinary bladder is So A, cystitis is a medical term for inflammation of the urinary bladder. Nephritis is inflammation of the kidney. Cholecystitis is inflammation of the gallbladder. Diverticulitis is a condition in which small pouches in the colon, large intestine, become inflamed. So if a hernia is incarcerated and the continents are so greatly compressed that circulation is compromised, the hernia is said to be C, a strangulated hernia occurs when a hernia is incarcerated and compressed by the surrounding tissues. It is a serious medical emergency and requires immediate surgery to repair the hernia, remove the dead tissue, and return oxygen to the tissues. When the mass can be replaced back into the body, it is considered reduce reducible. Hernias are not at risk of rupturing. A congenital hernia is one that is present at birth and is usually found around the umbilicus. A 70-year-old man presents with an acute onset of severe tearing abdominal pain that radiates to his back. His BP is 88 over 66, pulse rate is 120, and respiration is 26 breaths a minute. Treatment for this patient should include. So ask yourself first, is this patient stable? Is this patient unstable? Why is this patient stable or why is this patient unstable? You guys don't give fluids out in the field. You guys don't do IVs. So due to his blood pressure, it's going to be 88 over 66. That's going to be an unstable patient. There's not much you're going to do for him on scene. So, so A, you're going to rapid transport to the hospital. Severe tearing abdominal pain that radiates to the back is typical of an abdominal aortic aneurysm or triple A. It commonly occurs in older patients, especially those with hypertension. Treatment includes high flow oxygen and rapid transport. The patient has signs of shock. Place him or her at supine. Do not vigorously palpate the patient's abdomen. Doing so may cause an aneurysm to rupture. In which position do most patients with acute abdominal pain prefer to be transported? So C, most patients with acute abdominal pain prefer to lie on their side with their knees flexed and usually drawn up to their abdomen. This is what we call a guarded position. If you see people in basically the fetal position or the guarded position, they're probably suffering from abdominal pain. This position takes pressure off the abdom abdominal muscles and may afford them pain relief. The other positions do not allow the pressure to be relieved and may cause further discomfort. <laughs> 